Now, we've seen some pretty wild stuff go down in history, but have you ever heard of the time Britain won a war in less time than it takes to watch an episode of Game of Thrones? That's right, welcome to the Anglo-Zanzibar War of 1896, aka the shortest war in history. So, to set the scene, Zanzibar, the small island kingdom off the east coast of Africa, just lost their sultan, and his nephew, Khalid bin Bargash, decides to take the throne. The only problem is Britain, who have their fingers in every pie at the time, aren't too keen on Bargash. Britain want another guy, Hamoud bin Muhammad, to be the next sultan, and they have a treaty which means they get a say in who takes the throne under the conditions of their protectorate in the region. So Khalid, defying British imperial orders, sets himself up in the palace with nearly 3,000 soldiers and several pieces of artillery. Britain, meanwhile, is having none of this, and they order their two warships docked in the harbour into ready positions, with troops sent ashore to protect the British consulate. These two ships, HMS Philomel and HMS Rush, are then joined by HMS Sparrow, which entered the harbour on the evening of August the 25th. The chief British diplomat in the region, Basil Cave, again ordered Khalid to stand down, but despite the significant British military presence in the harbour, Khalid again refused. Two more British warships arrived the next day, the HMS Raccoon and the HMS St George, the latter carrying Rear Admiral Henry Rawson, commander of the British fleet in the area at the time, and Cave, the senior diplomat, had also received a telegram from the British government in London stating, You are authorised to adopt whatever measures you may consider necessary, and will be supported in your action by Her Majesty's government. Do not, however, attempt to take any action which you are not certain of being able to accomplish successfully. The final ultimatum to Khalid was issued on the 26th of August, demanding that he leave the palace by 9am the next day. That night, Cave also demanded that all non-military boats leave the harbour in preparation for war. At 8am the next morning, only one hour before the ultimatum expired, Khalid sent a reply to Cave stating, We have no intention of hauling down our flag and we do not believe you would open fire on us. Cave replied in true 19th century British diplomatic style, stating that he had no desire to fire upon the palace, but quote, Unless you do as you are told, we shall certainly do so. That was the last Cave heard from Khalid, and at 9am the order was given for the British ships in the harbour to begin bombarding the palace. By 9.02, two minutes into the war, the majority of Khalid's artillery had been destroyed, and the palace's wooden structure had started to collapse with 3,000 defenders inside. It is also around this time, two minutes after the bombardment started, that Khalid is said to have escaped through a back exit of the palace, leaving his servants and fighters to defend alone. By 9.38, the shelling had ceased, the Sultan's flag pulled down, and the shortest war in history had officially ended after only 38 minutes. For such a short war, the casualty rate was surprisingly high, with over 500 of Khalid's fighters killed or wounded, mainly due to the high explosive shells exploding on the palace's flimsy structure. One British petty officer was also severely injured, but later recovered in hospital. With Khalid out of the way, the UK was free to place the pro-British Sultan Hamoud on the throne of Zanzibar, and he ruled on behalf of Her Majesty's government for the next six years. As for Khalid, he managed to escape with a small group of loyal followers to the local German consulate, and despite repeated calls from the British for his extradition, he was smuggled out of the country on October the 2nd by the German Navy and taken to modern-day Tanzania. It was not until British forces invaded East Africa in 1916 that Khalid was finally captured and subsequently taken to St Helena for exile, notably the same place that Napoleon was sent to exile. After serving time, he was later allowed to return to East Africa, where he died in 1927. So that was a quick rundown of the shortest war in history. Let me know what you guys want me to talk about next. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.